Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm gonna to be talking about how to create slow motion in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, the thing that you really need to pull off some really good slow motion is some footage that's higher than 30 frames per second. It's shot on a higher um, frames per second, so you know, 60, 120. Um, if you get into like the 240 range, that's when you're actually getting into like slow-mo cameras and stuff like that. But anything higher than 60 gives you a little bit more wiggle room and allows you to achieve more slow motion. It can be done without a higher um, frames per second, and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later um, with some of the tools that After or Adobe Premiere gives you to blend them together. So you'll see I have some Premiere Pro footage right here, and if I right-click on this and click Properties, you will see that it has been shot on 59.94, so about 60 frames per second, which will give me a lot of room to work with. So the first thing I need to do is create a composition, a new... Uh, a sequence, my bad, a new sequence, and I need to set it at my target. So I'm not setting it at the 60 frames per second it started at, I'm setting it at the 30 frames per second that I want to export it in. And this is important because otherwise, when you do the slow motion effects, it'll, um, it'll still be looking for the 60 frames per second, which means all that room that you got from shooting in 60 frames per second will be lost. So we're going to go with the 1080p 30 frames per second sequence here and click OK. And then we're gonna click and drag our footage in here. Should probably, uh, so we want to keep existing settings. We don't wanna change it to the 60 frames per second. We wanna keep our 30 frames per second. So click OK there. I probably should have shortened the sequence timer when I created it instead of eight hours, but that's OK. We will just zoom in right here. So you'll notice something right off the bat is if we play this footage on the right here, just me dragging this through um, the bushes. I thought it would be a kind of a cool slow-mo shot uh, while I was in Japan. So you drag it through the bushes here, and you'll see it looks just like normal footage. But if we play this over here, um, this is the view. We're viewing this directly instead of through the sequence. You'll see it's extremely smooth. And that's due to the, the sequence settings, that we're only looking at it in 30 frames per second. So it's throwing out every other frame, which loses the smoothness. Now, if you have 120 frames per second, 240 frames per second, you could put it in here, and it'll probably look just about like this, unless you have a faster monitor, because the refresh rate on your monitor limits how much you can see frames per second. So most monitors are right around 60. So you can see up to 60, but if you try to like put 120 frames per second, it'll look a little bit different just because the motion blur will be almost non-existent because of how many frames it's taking. But you won't actually see the, the really smoothness of it unless you play it back on 120 hertz or 240 hertz monitor. So 60 frames per second is a good um, kind of a cap at what you can see. So what we have here is we have our, our composition over here with 30 frames per second and we can go ahead and just cut out the beginning and then the end you know with like the setup and the 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 you know destruction at the end where you know I have to bring it back so now we have this piece of footage and it plays normally so what we can do right off the bat is we can click um not g we can right click this and we can go into speed and duration and then we can drop this down to 50. And the reason we can drop this down to 50 without doing anything to it is because it's shot at 60. So if we cut that in half, it's at 30, and now it's at the native resolution of our sequence. And you'll notice it's just slower, and there isn't like any major choppiness. It looks just like it should at a 30 frames, just slower than usual. However, that's not what we want to do because we don't have much effect, like much control over anything. So then the next thing we could do is, you know, we could cut a part of the video. And then right click and speed duration, you know, speed this up a little. Oops, not, that's not the one I wanted to do. Maybe like go 125, so we'll make it a little bit quicker. And then, you know, slow this one down a little bit. So make this one, it's 50. And that gives you kind of the effect of fast and then into slow. But there's no ability to adjust the transition here. So it doesn't give the effect that, you know, I'm looking for here. So we can do the... Uh, speed ramp method and this is probably the best method to do any speed manipulation within um, Adobe Premiere Pro if it's gonna be like parts of a clip instead of the whole clip so to do that what we're gonna do is we're gonna first make this video a little bit bigger just so we can see this line right here and this is our keyframe line it by default it's set on opacity so just set on how um, how much of the footage you can actually see but we want to make it bigger so we can see 
what we're going to be doing, and that's the speed ramp. So you could, um, I'm using the mouse wheel, just scrolling up over the V1 here. See, um, if I scroll up anywhere on this side over here, it's going to make it larger. Or you can click and drag the top and make it larger that way. So then, let's right click on this, and then now we go down to Show Clip Keyframes. You'll see it's currently set on opacity, but what we want is time remap remapping. So we're gonna go here, and we're gonna click on speed. And now you'll see that it has adjusted it to the speed one. And you can see that the this is at 100% currently. So we want it to come in right here. And let's say we want it to slow down right here. So we go to this point and we click the keyframe, add remove keyframe right here. It's going to add a keyframe right up here to the top. Now, if we can click and drag one of the sides, what we're gonna get is we're going to get the speed ramp in the middle here. So if we click on the right edge here and then go down to the line and then we click to lower it, let's lower it down to that 50% that we got last time, the native uh, frames per second that we can create. So you'll see that it goes and then it slows itself down. So it goes normal speed, slows itself down. You can see this a little bit better if we click on the left side. So back into here, left side and we raise that up. You'll see it's trying to go backwards, and I have a little bit of overclip on the left side, but that's okay. So it goes really fast, slows down, and you know we could add a keyframe right here, make it a little bit longer, and then just bring it back up to 100%. Right there, okay. So we can do that as well. You can also manipulate the keyframes right here. If you click on it, go to the effects controls, they are right here. So if you wanna actually type something in, you know, you want it 42%, it's kinda of hard to use your mouse to go up and down. So you can go to the keyframe right here and um, type in percentages uh, on the keyframes. Makes it a little bit easier, drop it down, yeah. Anyway, so we're back to here. So we have this footage, it's going fast, and then it's remapping back up to full speed. Um, but we can make it a little bit smoother. So if we take this thing in the center, we can actually rotate it and it's going to make the edges more defined, uh, less defined. So it's gonna round them off. So if we make this, you know, um, if we drop this down even more, you'll see that what we did was we actually rounded the center of it by doing this. Where if it's straight, they're kind of straight lines, we can round it or we can make them just a straight drop off. So this is really making how smooth we want it to go. So I'm gonna back this up here. Oops. Okay, so now let's go even slower. So instead of 40, let's make it a quarter speed. And this goes out of the native. So now we're actually gonna have to use a little bit of Adobe's um, magic to fix this. So now we made this slower like this. We've actually lowered it down and then got it up. We'll go ahead and just unlink the audio and delete the audio from this for now. So it slows itself down. But if you'll notice, now it's looking very choppy because we're no longer within the 30 frame fresh threshold. We're running at 15 frames a second because of how much we slowed it down. This is where Adobe really helps out. You can right click on this and go to time interpolation and then go down to optical flow or frame blending. But optical flow is really the one that works best for this. So what this is gonna do is it's going to create new frames based on just some math. It has a bunch of frames at 15 frames a second. So every other frame it needs to recreate. So it can draw, it has the before and the after. So it just draws the one in the middle. You know, um, one point, this leaf from here moved to here um, in one frame. So it's just gonna draw the leaf here. And it's gonna do that and it's going to really make it look pretty neat. So if you'll notice, Nothing has changed. I added it, why isn't it changing? And that's because we have a red bar up here. And that means that it needs to be rendered for us to actually see it. So that's pretty simple. Just make sure you're on your sequence and click the enter key. And you'll see it starts the rendering process. And this is just doing that math that I was talking about, redrawing everything and processing the entire interpolation. It'll be faster uh, to do this on shorter clips and faster computers. Um, if you're doing like a 10 minute clip, this might take 30 minutes, 40 minutes to render out. So just understand that. But we are done right here. And now that you'll see, look at that beautiful slow motion right there. 
just absolutely beautiful. There's actually no artifacting around it. So yeah, we can come in really quickly, slow it way down, and then speed it right back up. And I can already feel that that's too long in slow motion. I would kind of like this to be moved to like here. So let's, oh, we gotta re-render it. The fun of working with things like this is that anytime you make a change, you have to quickly re-render it out. And so another really important aspect of this slow motion is understanding what is too slow. So at some point, this is going to be too slow for Adobe to actually manage. And I'll show you that right now. So, you know, it goes in, comes out. So if we took this right here, we dragged it down even farther, like, I don't even know how much, uh, 10%, let's go 10%. And then we're gonna cut off this right here, just because I wanna show you. So at 10%, you'll see it's back to really, really choppy, so click enter. It's going to try to create this. And the problem here is instead of having it half and half where you have one keyframe and then another and you can just draw in between, now you're at like one, um, wow, it actually did it really well. But you'll see we started to get artifacting right here, right here, look right there. We're getting a bubble. You see that leaf right here as it moves through? And that's what will start happening the, the more you try to use Adobe's redraw feature. But we just took something that was only at 60 frames a second and we put it at 10% speed. So it's like it's at um, 600 frames per second, if I'm doing the math right, which is really, really neat to do. And this is actually almost completely passable. We could crop this in a little bit. And since there, the bubbling effect only happens at the bottom here, we would actually have a usable piece and a really strong slow motion. But yes, that is how you do slow motion in Adobe Premiere Pro. Really fun, and due to its built-in capabilities, you don't even need to shoot at a higher frame per second to get some incredible slow motion. Thanks everyone for joining me with this tutorial. If you, you know, like what you see and you want to see more Adobe-related content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you got any comments or questions or tutorials you want made, go ahead and put those in the comments below as well. And until next time, guys, see ya.